what I'm going to be doing here is using ceramic resistors as heaters in uh, the 3D printed build chamber. It's an interesting one because Stratasys has a patent so you can't sell those unless you pay them the rights to use it. It was supposed to expire a few years ago and then they got it extended somehow. So what you need for this build is a scrap piece of right angle aluminium here. I made myself a little thing to mix the epoxy in and I've got some five minute epoxy but you know it's even better than five minute epoxy. Four minute epoxy so I'm going to use that, save one minute out of my life. Ends of some large cable ties as mixers for the epoxy. Basic electronics tools, some cutters and little plier things. Solder, uh, soldering iron. You can you probably want a fairly decent powered soldering iron for this because um, it's some thick wire, but yeah, you can get away with a, a normal, whatever soldering iron should be fine. You just have to be patient heating it up. And then I got this bad boy. Uh, one of my engineering friends um, actually just moved to France recently and he donated some of his hardware to me, so I was pretty lucky. Shout out to Lucas. Dell power supply, you know, they say it can put out, what is it, 500 watts? 502 watts max, probably more of a realistic claim on a, on a server power supply like this than a normal PC power supply. We'll be pulling about 160 watts. Something to note is the print number two that we did on the cruiser in the enclosure there I had the light globe going so that's a halogen light globe at 60 watts so I think those are roughly 25% uh, of the power gets turned into light so the other 75% gets turned into heat so we're looking at about 45 uh, watts of heat. What's in the J car bag? Okay so J car is a local shop for you guys that aren't from Australia uh, it's awesome to be able to go there on a Sunday afternoon and buy some hardware if you need it and then you can uh, work on whatever projects you're finishing off that weekend. So I like to support them even though it's more expensive than buying online. If you don't support them then they won't exist so there you go. These are ceramic 10 watt 22 ohm resistor. So I've got eight of those here and I've actually already been using this method on my first 3D printer. It was Flash Forge Creator, the wooden, you know, wooden box looks pretty ugly. But yeah, I've been running that off a power supply, the same method. So these are the TO220 heat sinks. So the fins on these ones are, um, it's about 20 mil high or 18 mil or something high fins. And uh, you know, we can leave the little solder plugs in here or take them out, doesn't matter. But I'm just gonna epoxy them onto the resistors and then basically that will just allow us to put 12 volts in and then make heat in the air. That's basically what this is doing. Um, so yeah, if you didn't know, that's basically all resistors, their, their whole job in life is to, uh, to take electricity and turn it into heat and we're just going to use them as a bunch of little heaters. Alright, so we've got one heat sink per resistor and then I'm going to mount them on here in some sort of array of 4x2. Yeah, I'll mark them out and place it on, glue it all together. I'm going to clean this with some alcohol and then glue it all on and then once I've glued it on then I'll solder it because it'll be a lot easier to uh, manipulate them into place before I solder them.
I'm tempted to press down, but that'll move it, so I'll just leave that. Now, the power supply. I found an Instructable. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Instructables before. They're really cool. There was actually the information about which pins to jump here to make this turn on when you power it up was on Instructables. And uh, yeah, it worked. It's, you know, I had to take a risk and try it. Um, and luckily it worked, so I guess I can quickly demonstrate that now. Oh no, I bumped it. Damn. I think it's all right. Got to be careful, hey? All right, so that's how I've jumped the pins on this one. Don't copy this unless you've got the exact same model because they're all different. Um, but yeah, that is the model that I've got here. DPS hyphen 500 CB space A rev 0303. O is not a number. Now let's plug it in. There we go. So we're plugged in and we're on. I don't know if you can hear that fan. It's not too noisy, but it's definitely audible. And yeah, it looks like that fan's just gonna run. Now the other thing, I'm gonna duck off the J car again actually, because I'm gonna I wanna uh, keep this as stock as much as possible. I don't want to solder onto these. Yeah, so I should be able to get a spade lug connector that goes onto this, I believe. It uh, looks like it's just about the right size to do a large spade lug connector. So while that uh, glue sets under here, the epoxy sets under there, I'll go and get some spade connectors for this power supply and then uh, we can hook it all up. Now there's one other uh, thing I might do is add an Arduino uh, temperature switch. So. The whole reason really I'm doing this is that you can't put how to do 240 volt wiring on YouTube. It's just not safe. All right, so my point is, my goal here is to give a method for people to have a temperature controlled 3D print build chamber that doesn't need 240 volt wiring. So the method that I've showed for number two print number two there that requires some 240 volt wiring using it using an STC 1000 module uh, I happen to have them from before when I was doing uh, I, was, I was wiring those up and selling them and um, yeah so I wouldn't recommend anyone do 240 volt wiring unless you're qualified basically I'll just leave it at that and yeah this method is great because now you can just use an IEC plug plug it into a power supply or if you've got a really beefy normal PC power supply, you can use that, or you could use a benchtop power supply, whatever you've got. Um, if you can get 12 volts, then you can use this method that I'm showing today. I've got a few Arduino units that I can uh, hook into this, and then we can have a temperature controlled unit. I'm back with more things from JCAR, and uh, just goes to show how useful it is to have a bricks and mortar shop. So I've got a few different ones here to try. All right, let's see which ones fit, and then, uh, and then we'll all know. I reckon that's the one. Big one, yeah, it's really tight, which is what you want, because there's gonna be quite a few amps going through there. A little heater. Yeah, unfortunately, a couple of these got moved when I uh, bumped it by the looks of it, but oh well. I'm just trying to get this done as quickly as possible and move on to 3D printing and all the other things I need to be doing. So I'll sit this in the back of the 3D printer. All these leads can go to one side and then I'll run the power down through the base back to the power supply, which will be outside the build chamber. Is. 
myself a decent bit of cable here. Okay, as you can see, um, yeah, that, that heat sink's pretty crooked, unfortunately, but anyway. Um, I'm gonna run positive in the middle there, negative on the outside. <clears throat> and yeah, I'll hook that up to this power supply. And I'll also add the other array of um, resistors and heat sinks that I've got from my old 3D printer, so we'll have a really nice, powerful heating system. All right, so let's check the starting temperatures. Okay, they're all about 16 degrees. It's good. All right, let's record this. All right, seeing some heat starting off pretty quick. So it's 20, 24, 25, 30. Right, I'm gonna uh, cut it here. I'll just leave these running to make sure there's a test for, um, sort of like a safety test, leave them running, see what equilibrium temperature they get to just on the bench here and then I will mount them in the 3D printer enclosure. Okay, so I've made up an Arduino module to demonstrate how to control one of these uh, server power supplies or you could use a normal PC power supply by grounding the uh, green wire. All I've had to do is use an example sketch as I've demonstrated before with Arduino. There's plenty of examples. You usually don't have to start from scratch with your own code. Um, so yeah, for this one, this is the if statement conditional and the only changes I've made to that is the threshold value. So I've changed that to 610 in my case because um, the way I've got the NTC thermistors set up in the voltage divider, uh, that's the value that I get for, uh, I think it's set to around about 40 degrees, just for this demonstration. And what else did I change? Um, basically just swapped over the low and high so that I'm turning the relay on when it's when the temperature is lower than the threshold obviously uh, that means we want to turn it on and heat it up and then I've added uh, that has in the example that has a one millisecond delay but we just don't need to turn it on enough very frequently and in fact it'll be bad for the relay to turn on enough quickly when the temperature is basically when the temperature is at the threshold there'll be some imperfections in the analog reading and um, that'll cause the relay to flicker which is really bad and um, I mean, it's obviously it'll be bad for the power supply as well no doubt so uh, yeah I've just set that to one sec anyway that's the changes I've made to that code so yeah there's no point in me even um, uploading that it's just still there and you can just uh, it's in the Arduino IDE so now let's go and have a look at the little setup that I've got over here
All right, so the way I've got it set up here is the um, onboard LED pin is connected to the relay. The relay has a, a diode in parallel with the coil with the negative side of the diode onto the positive um, input and that protects the Arduino, that's the flyback diode. So yeah, I've just got these NTC thermistors, it's a 10K NTC thermistor and then the, the other normal resistor is in the box there. So this is now running because we're down to what, 25 degrees or something. Now if I touch this thermistor on the resistor, on the heater, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just turned off. And you can see the LED here is turned off. And there it goes back on again because it's gone too cold. All right, yeah, so that's uh, basically that project. What I was really setting out to do here is just prove that uh, the prints won't delaminate while they're printing or even after they've uh, printed and cooled down, they won't delaminate, at least not as much with a, a heated build chamber. So there is one last thing I can say, if you wanted to have a simple setup that doesn't have an Arduino, you could just get a bimetallic thermostat, a whole lot of different temperatures you can get. So you can have them preset to, even down to as low as 35 degrees. I've got some here actually, 35, 50, 60, 70, 100 degrees. Um, yeah, you could probably get a 50 degree one mounted somewhere in the chamber there maybe put a heat sink on it to make it a bit more sensitive to the air temperature. Obviously you'd want that closed when it's cold and then when it goes past its threshold temperature you'd want it to be open so it turns off the power supply and then you could just run your uh, your on off wire, you know, the green and black wire you could put on that on your computer power supply and then that'll just turn the uh, power supply on and off. Then you don't need Arduino, you don't need 240 volt wiring. There you go. Uh, um, that was a long one, that's taken me a couple of days to get all that done and um, yeah, I hope you appreciate it and I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing and um, let me know what you think in the comments if you want me to follow this up with uh, more thorough testing. Um, I think it might be worth doing a different 3D print that is longer along the uh, edges of the print bed and then see if we can get something that'll consistently delaminate and be very difficult to print without a heated chamber and then do it with the heated chamber and prove that yes indeed it does work. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, catch you later, bye.